Hi, Pete Fo, who I don't know. Carol, we're, we're doing a documentary for New Zealand. Okay, that sounds good. We want you to take a mac and chop the Terrell working or how you want to do it. You can ask Terrell what he does. Terrell, what, what, department, what department do you work in for Special Olympics? Uh, I, I, I am, yeah, I am, my, my job is, is sports. Uh, we, we do sports uh, books and stuff. Uh, they are in the closet, closet right now. Okay, so what department do you work in? I um, work in sports slash healthy athletes right now. And you liked the old building? Yeah, well, we used to not have uh, well, we used to not have half days on Fridays during the summer. Things have changed, huh? Yeah, times have changed. Did you all know we have our own business card? Bobby, you have any business cards to show today? Yep, I do. Wrong way. That way. Thank you. <laughs> Been here for about twelve years, and I've done different types of sports. I've done. Uh, um, softball, and I've done bowling and uh, floor hockey and stuff like that. Um, for uh, softball, we actually went to the uh, World Games in North Carolina. Thank you very much, sir. Ben's just been made a board member in his local organization. It's a huge honor and reflects the philosophy of including athletes at every level. Thank you very much. I just heard about it. I want to congratulate you for your unanimous vote as head of the Athlete Congress and a member of the board of Special Olympics Maryland. Thank you very much, sir. We have skiing and we have... Two kinds of skiing. Yeah, we Special have Olympics gives skiing. athletes an opportunity to participate and compete in more than 30 so sports. It's a very long list. I do swimming, track and field, temp and bowling. I just finished tennis and I'm doing bowling right now. Cross country skiing, cross country running. Last weekend I got an 83 and an 86. Sailing and bocce. I've been here, working here almost nine years and I've been an athlete for almost eight years. We have other guys like basketball. And what's your sport? I don't do much sports anymore. I've changed. How come? Things have changed. Special Olympics isn't the only legacy of Eunice Kennedy Shriver. She also campaigned for the closure of institutions. At the Washington Library, Ricardo Thornton is just starting his day, labelling books. Ricardo's married now and has an adult son, but for 20 years he was institutionalised, removed from his community. Why? Because he was a little slow. Morning. I went in the institution when I was about, what, six, seven, and stayed there for a pretty long time. But one of the things I love about it that is that we had, we had the small Special Olympics. And we had Ms. Shriver would come out with her camp, and that kind of helped us a lot, just to be inspired and knowing that I have some ability. Initially, Ricardo found he wasn't accepted in society. Today, he's proud of the job he does, of his family, and that he can now read, having built the skills year by year. I could not read, and I was kind of ashamed. I used to abbreviate a lot when I um, read. People, I understood, but people didn't understand how I was doing it. So um, when I graduated, I wanted to go and get my education to continue my reading skills. So working in a library has helped me with life skills. And I think I'm making a difference. When my baby was born, um, my wife asked the doctor, would my baby love me? And the doctor looked over to her and asked her, yes, your baby would love you, but she was asking it because of her disability and our disability, and would he accept us for what we are? And the doctor said, yes, he's gonna love you. The ability to read to his son meant everything to Ricardo. This is the book that I would read to my son before he goes to bed at night. And he would love daddy to read to him. And it's, just, it's so important to take that special time to read. And it reads, there's a monster everywhere. The story of this first 40 years has been that my mother and others like her 
enormous pioneers, people that had no idea what the future held, nobody to support them, said, we're going to take the chance on average citizens. And I would show him the picture. You see my mom? That story just, is their story. That's the first 40 years. The next 40 years is we've got to mobilize those people to become aggressive at challenging the whole communities to change, not just pockets, not just small groups, but whole communities. After work, Ben does what so many other people in his community do, heads for a workout. I've been a special Olympic athlete for 30 years. For my swimming, the strokes I really like are the freestyle and the breaststroke. The one stroke I really don't like is the backstroke, because that one is very hard for me to learn. Trying to get real healthy, trying to look, trying to look better as, a, as an athlete or, or as a real person, like a human being. We may run a track meet uh, or play a, a match of football or cricket or swim in a race, but the deep power of those moments is that they challenge people to think differently about human value. So I think uh, the future uh, of our movement is to be the world's greatest uh, movement promoting human acceptance and universal human value that the world's ever seen.